Hey Pixels! In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this 3D design illustration in Adobe Dimension. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you'll be first to know when a new video drops. Hope you did it! Now, let's jump right into the tutorial. First, we're going to create a new document that's 1280 by 800 pixels. Now that we have our document set up, we can start creating our scene. First, we're going to set up a wall composed of four separate planes for the scene. In the Starter Assets panel, we're going to select and add a plane. With the plane on the scene selected, we'll rotate it on its z-axis at a 90 degree angle. We'll also need to move the plane object to the ground field by selecting Move to Ground in the Actions panel. Now, we'll need to duplicate the tile by pressing Command or Control D on your keyboard and position the second tile so that it's beside the first tile. We'll repeat this two more times, stacking the tiles on top of the first pair. We have our tiles or wall set up for our scene. So far, so good. Now, let's add some objects to the scene. In the Starter Assets panel, we're going to filter the assets by selecting the model's icon. On the bottom left tile, we're going to add a text model to the center and add the letter T. This tile represents typography. I'll change the font to Times Bold. I'll also add a bevel to the model using the following settings. Moving on to the bottom right tile, we're going to add the rounded cube flat object to the center of the tile and shrink it down. Now we'll grab the text model and use the greater than angle bracket and underscore. I'll change the font to times bold. This tile represents code. For the top left tile, we'll grab the pyramid model and place it towards the center. We'll decrease the depth of the object or z-axis so that it's flat. Now with the object selected, 
we'll hit Command or Control D on our keyboards to duplicate the shape. We'll play around with the size of the pyramids so that one is bigger than the other. Now we'll grab the disc object and position it on the tile so that it kind of looks like a sun in the sky. Finally, for the top right tile, we'll add a text object to the center of the tile and use the equal sign. I'll change the font to times bold. I already have a color palette that I'll be using for this entire scene. If you're following along, feel free to be creative and use a different color palette. I'll be using some blues, purple, and orange for this 3D design. For the overall scene background, I'm going to color it purple. To do this, in the Scene Layers panel, I'm going to select the Environment layer, and then in the Properties panel, color the background accordingly. Now that I have the color in the scene environment, I can add different materials and color to the objects within the scene. In the Starter Assets panel, we're going to filter the assets by selecting the Materials icon. For the bottom left tile, let's add the matte material to the background and color it a lighter purple. Then we can add the metal material to the text object. For the bottom right tile, we'll add the brushed concrete material to the background, the metal material to the rounded cube, and color it orange. And finally, we'll add plastic material to the text object and color it white. For the top left tile, we'll add the plastic material and color it white. Then, we'll apply a matte material to the two pyramids and color them teal. Lastly, we'll apply a matte material to the disc and color it orange. For the top right tile, we'll apply a matte material to the background and color it teal. For the text object, we'll apply matte material and color it. I'm going to quickly turn on Render Preview so that I can quickly get a sneak peek of what our final scene will look like when we completely render the scene, without actually having to render a scene because rendering does take some time. Our scene looks so good, the lighting is nice, 
but I want to make a brighter environment light for our scene. In the starter assets panel, I'm going to select the lights filter. Under environment lights, I'm going to select studio light arches A. I'm also going to select three point light. If I hit render preview again, you can already see the increase in brightness by using this particular environment lighting setup. Now that the scene is complete, we can adjust the camera view for the scene using the orbit, pan, and dolly tool found in the toolbar. When I find a camera view that I like, I'm going to bookmark the view by selecting the camera bookmark tool. I'll click the plus icon to bookmark a camera view so that I can return to that view as needed. For this scene, I'll play around with the scene camera and save a different view until I find the view or views that I like best. Lastly, I'll make adjustments to the environment ground plane reflection using the following settings. Now, I'm happy with my camera view and the entire scene. The colors, lighting, everything looks fantastic. I'll switch from design mode to render mode. I can select the different camera views that I wish to render or just the current view. I can also edit my export file name and choose different render formats. In this case, I'll just render a PNG image for this scene so that I can either share it on social media or use it for another design project. Now I'll simply hit render to render my scene. Once the render is complete, I can share my work on social media, add it to my portfolio, sky's the limit. That's how you create this really cool 3D design illustration in Adobe Dimension. Be sure to share your work with me on social media at ExoPixel. Subscribe to ExoPixel for more great videos on design, code, and tech. I'll see you in the next tutorial.